Welcome out, ladies and gentlemen, to this ETF2L Highlander Season 11 matchup of Super Dickmans versus Chess Club. Should be a great one as we are at the lower bracket final. The loser is going to be out. No good. Going to go down in third place, and the winner is going to be pushed up into that grand finals and have a chance to win it all. And we'll see what's going to be happening here as we're going to be starting out on CP process tonight. These teams should be running up here pretty shortly. I am Sick of Food, joined out here with John behind the scenes and Vipa to my side. How you doing out here now that I know how to say your name, Vipa? <laughs> I'm doing great, Sick of Food. I'm really excited to see some high-pressure TF2. Lower bracket finals are always one of my favorite games to watch just because... It's down to the wire, you know, both teams are just going to play their heart out, so I'm excited. And it should be a good one, I mean, especially when it comes to 5CP. Uh, it always can be a little bit of an interesting game mode process, uh, though it is a little bit of an op unoptimized map. I don't know, I kind of, I like it for everything except the final point, but we'll see what's going to be happening as the teams have gone live. We will come out to our first mid-fight here. And uh, we'll see which demo man is going to get out here first. It looks like it's going to be Spelly getting out. It's going to be able to grab that med pack early on in this fight, but not able to get out too much damage. Trying to sticky up the choke a little bit as finally both teams are going to be joining up each other's sides. But Spelly going down early on here as Mayhe gets taken out as well. And that's two early picks in this mid fight in the favor of Chess Club. Wow, that was just a really great play by a Disky there. He just kind of played passive. He trapped out the blue demo and... Uh... Funs just kind of came in and cleaned up that demo frag, and there you go, that's mid for red team. And they gotta be careful here, Dixman, as they lo are losing a couple more. Actually, the engineer Clark went down, I'm not sure what he was trying to peek for. The Disky doing a good job of uh, poking some people back, not allowing them to get too much free spam there from the shutter side. And the second point's gonna go down here as well, and that's just how important that midpoint is is that if you lose that, you can go all the way here. And now we're going to be sitting out this final point. And also, did the medic go down there? Must have, as Uber is coming in into this final point. Yeah, huge Uber ad here for Red, but some really good denies coming out by Dickmans here. They're moving off to the left side of the point, and really no cap time going down. This could go badly for Red Team. See what they can do is the blue team doing a great job, but a couple frags actually coming up right now in the favor of Chess Club. They're slowly rolling on here. The final people are going to be taken out, and yes, they will be able to take this with a team wipe going in their favor. Great job out of Chess Club on that final push. What seemed a little bit of a misplay of not getting down the point ultimately works out in their favor. And what did you see in that final push there out of Chess Club? I really, I really just think that, uh, that maybe blue just kited a little bit too hard, and Chess Club played the point smart, and... And they, they wiped it up quick before Blue could get Uber. So we'll see what they can do as we come on to this next midpoint. Hopefully the Spelly as well as Mayhew will be able to keep alive this time. Dima looks like he did a fast rollout to that mid. He's actually going to go down here early on. Wasn't able to get healed up back from this medic. But fortunately Dickman down two again. Kazul uh, is going to get his dead ringer popped off there. Faking it as he man. Big nice frag onto funds and a little bit of trading back and forth here, but Chess Club once again reigning supreme as they take the second mid fight of the game. Oh, and here comes a sack from Jackie Legs in on the medic. He's behind, didn't really manage to get anything out there. I actually really did like the play out of Dima. I thought that was that was a good jump, even though he died. He kind of made space on the left side, and you see this time Dickmans gets out with their medic and demo alive. So now they can hold the second point for free here. And it looks like they are going to be sending up onto the second point, both medics holding on to 100% Uber. So this is where it kind of uh, comes down to teams and how can they do the sacrifice pushes. You know, one of the strategies that's pretty common is trying to send in your, your scout, your soldier, trying to make a play. But right now you can see uh, Henri is actually holding in the uh, upper IT side. I believe that's how you say his name. As actually Burn gets a nice headshot on his Sinrise there who was kind of peeking around that choke. And Chess Club just kind of feeling it out. Looks like they are kind of peeking through the sewers right now. Yeah, the thing about process is even if, even with two down, the team on mid still has a pretty solid hold. So we might see kind of a little bit of a big stalemate here. We got a spy duel in IT here. Z-Man fans out. Yeah, both teams just kind of prodding and poking, looking for an opening here, playing their snipers and choke. 
And I guess it's a little bit on Dickman's to be able to make a play here. It's actually Disky pushing in alone on the source sides. Gets down some decent damage right now, but he's able to escape with his life. Down goes actually the Chief Hawk, and that's going to be no heavy here for the blue side. Down for another 15 seconds. We'll see if the Chess Club is going to want to make any pushes off this as another frag. is actually coming up, and here comes a big bomb in. Coming in from the Soldier Jackie Legs, trying to find some damage. Gets a little bit onto the Medic, but he's going to back up with another frag. Pick it up. Make that two more. Down goes the Sniper for Dickman. And that's going to prompt a pushing here from Chess Club as they do not need to worry about their heads flying off and they're just going to roll into this next point. Wow, really nicely executed push there. Adeski just got launched in and Jiradied into Blue Team's second point. And Chess really just kind of got in there and supported him. I really thought he was going to go down, but they, they kind of, you know, saved him there. And now they are in a pretty good position to push. Ubers are even though. So we could see some spy plays, maybe a soldier sack coming out from Chess here. It'll be interesting to see what they want to do. Chesco didn't do anything. I mean, I believe this is the same Ubers as before. As Jackie likes doing a jump in. Beautiful job and does exactly what you said. Gets in there, gets the force off, and we'll see how Chess Club is going to defend this. As it looks like Spell is going to try to push this. Actually, it's going to be Chess Club pushing in from that lower hand side. Down goes the medic early on in this fight as Yahoo gets taken out as well. Sentry Gun is going to get focused down here. Is with the Uber Charger trying to bring in the rest of the red players. Is getting spammed from the backside. The point still hasn't gone down, but finally it will as Chess Club goes up 2 0 early on in this fight. Wow, beautiful execution there by Jackie Legs the Soldier. Uh, Chess is just kind of looking like the the more organized team here. Just some really clean plays. And hopefully this next bit, mid will go a little bit better for uh, Dickmans here. And if you were Dickmans, what would you be doing differently in these mid fights to help your team uh, out as we come on to this third one? Really, I would just look to try and play my sniper with heals and just play it maybe a little bit more passive and try not to bleed players initially. Yes, Dima, the soldier going down there for Dickman's early on, and we'll see if any other frags are going to be coming out. Here comes Jackie, like huge bomb in, focusing down the heavy, takes him down. Everybody's looking up to take care of him right now, and that's allowing the Disky to spam out some more damage. Currently, two frags in the favor of Dickman's as a medic goes down. Beautiful headshot there coming out of Tracker. And that's going to be a clean wipe, I believe, on that mid fight. Actually, Yahoo is going to be able to keep his life alive. Dima coming up from the respawn, and Chess Club just being utterly dominant early on in this fight. Oh wow, big air shot coming out of Dima onto a Disky. A little bit of a bright spot here for Dickman. That was a beautiful shot right there. Yeah, we'll Demo see what man. they can do. Little yeah, go ahead. And that's actually going to give 100% Uber advantage right now to Chess Club. They are missing some of their key classes, so they're probably going to wait for them to get forward here. But when you have Uber advantage, uh, Vipa, what would you say is kind of the, the style of pushing that you'd want to do in this situation? Well, on process, it's really just kind of hard to get through that choke, and uh, the enemy team will generally play pretty far back, so I would Uber a scout through initially just to get through the point, but it looks like Red is Ubering in, jump out of a disky trying to get forward, and it gets cleaned up by Clark here. Now trying to get forward is actually Burn gets a beautiful headshot off of Spire onto the medic, and so at least both medics will be down, but with so many players down for the blue side of Dickmans, they're going to have to give up this second point and move on to the next one. Uh, Fragmented, though, is going to be down for another 10 seconds, so he's going to get a, onto a long respawn wave here, but it's not going to stop. Actually, the red team looks like they might just try to do a, a little bit of a dry push. It's going to be Kazool. He's trying to get a, maybe a little bit too cheeky as uh, too many players die there, and that's going to stifle off the push. No sniper up on the red side as well. So we'll see what Chess Club's going to do. It looks like it's going to be playing a little bit more passive right now. And what do you think of this Crits Creek play coming out of Chess Club? Well, I think, uh, I'm not really sure how I feel about it. I, I feel like if you're winning uh, this kind of handily as Chess Club has been, I'm not sure if there's any need to switch it up. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, it's, well, this is what you'll learn about the EU side of things. My NA caster is that EU medics love to mix it up. They love to do stuff, whereas we tend to be more traditional. But right now, uh, at least Dickman's did get a nice snipe onto funds there, taking down the scout. But it looks like they're going to just back up. Uh, maybe they saw that the enemy team had Chris Creek, and so they're opting to play a little bit more safe, but a 15% disadd currently in the favor of Dickman's, but it's going to be evening out, and now we're going to see Chris Creek on Chess Club, and we'll see how they want to use this as Sinrise goes down there and just some poking it back and forth now. But, I mean, this is a, a bit of an odd situation now. They switch to Chris Creek. They try to go for the cheeky play, but now they're kind of stuck in a really awkward spot. Yeah, if you're Dickman's here, I feel like you just need to Uber in and try to win that Uber versus Crits fight right here. 
Uh, if you Uber a scout through choke, and this is what they're gonna do. Uh, main coming in, Ubered in onto the medic, but wow, Fragmented kites this really well back into IT. Full Chris advantage for Chess Club now. Yeah, and it looks like they're just going to send everything forward to try to take care of it. So many players onto the point, but the mini century, as well as with the rest of the team, doing so much damage. But here comes the Disky out right now. Crits Creek is coming out, but not really finding any damage with it. It doesn't matter as so much of the team's damage is coming elsewhere. A Disky going all the way and trying to oh go for the medic. God. Gets the pan out, taking down the medic. I haven't seen that kind of play in a while, as the sniper is going to get cleaned up as well. And huge plays coming out of a Disky, overextending, but it doesn't matter when you got the frying pan in your hand. Great play coming out of him. Is this real? Frying pan kill onto the medic? I haven't seen that in the playoff game in all of my seasons. That's really just impressive to see. I'm surprised that the enemy team didn't come to the response of the medic sooner with how loud that damn thing is, but <laughs> ultimately it will come down. But oh! Huge headshot coming out of the spy, taking down Fragmented, and that's going to put the advantage back in the favor of Dickman's. And I'll be curious as Fragmented's down for another 10 seconds if he'll switch off back to the Uber gun. Uh, but we'll see what the, is going to be happening now as Dickman's in an opportunity to push out to second. Yeah, I think Dickman's needs to start taking some risks here. Uh, if I'm them, I definitely want to just try and cap off second right here. I think they need to make a, a couple risks, maybe go for some big plays. Maybe they're the team that needs to try the crits play and, and catch Chess Club off guard here. And right now they do have at least about a 30%, a maybe a little bit less than 30% advantage if they maybe if they speed it up a little bit here. As Z-Man is behind the enemy team, distracting Burn with another headshot onto funds. He has this number. I don't think like I've seen a sniper hit the scout's head so many times so quickly in a game. But we'll see how Dickmans wants to push this. It looked like they wanted to go through IT, which is a little bit questionable when the enemy team's set up. I mean, it's such a small choke to have to walk through. It looks like they've rotated over here, but here comes in Jackie Legs. Does get the force off. The medic flying way up into the skybox. Able to reconnect with this team. And looks like this Uber is going to be for naught, as they uh, aren't going to get too much with it. Yeah, I think, I think Fragmented is really just playing very well. He's always in a position to get out when Dickman's Uber's in, and as a result, Chess is, is, has full ad a lot of the time. And I think uh, I think the pick classes really need to step up and, and try to equalize that. We'll see if they can do just that, as the Uber charge did come out from Chess Club's side to kind of push back, retake the midpoint. Never was taken full control of by Dickman's, as they're backing up to their own second point right now. Sinrise did go down in that exchange. As well as Mayhe, Z-Man's going to get taken out on that back side. So no spy up to give some intel to his team. As it looks like Jackie Legs is going to be leading the charge in here. It's going to get popped back. But actually, the medic down incredibly low. I don't know if anybody noticed the damage. Actually, Kazul's right behind the medic. Gets the back step. Huge place coming out of him. And that's going to be a lot of damage rolling in onto that second point. But actually, it's the engineer. All things Clark getting a huge pick onto Fragmented. Trading medics right there. And that's going to give some hope to this final point. As they are currently only down two points. And they should be able to hold onto this last from the huge play of the engineer. Wow, Sigafu, I know you always like seeing those engineer plays and that is a big one. Saving your uber advantage with only your shotgun and your little NG legs. That is a huge play. I resent the little NG legs <laughs> comment there. Please, sir. Please. We have giant NG legs. It looks like Dickmans are going to be using their own legs to push on to this next point. Doing a good job here. And also, we see the Crits Creek play coming out of uh, Chess Club again as they're trying to defend this point. Do you think this is why is this second point fight? I, I really don't know. They do have a 25% add, and they're going to be coming up on the Crits in just a few seconds. I think this is really going to catch Dickmans off guard here. Oh, uh, we'll Yahoo gets is. picked off, but no pick onto the medic. So maybe ill-advised, but they do cap off the sec or They are going to cap off the second point here. Really, only Clark to distract, and he goes down. No engineer on last. This is not looking good for Dickmans here. Yeah, they at least did keep their medic alive, so the respawns are going to come back up. It's going to give them a chance to push out of this final point if they want to. Chess Club's medic of Fragmented is going to be switching back off onto the Uber Charge. Uh, but it's going to obviously, they're still going to be at a disadvantage no matter what they do. Kazul getting his dead ringer popped off there, trying to get some intel. Looks like they're going to push him from the lower side, but Spelly gets taken out from a sticky trap early on. And the spy back cap, so much of the time backing off. And that's actually going to force Dickmans to back off here. Yeah, that's actually a really good play there by Kazul. If you're blue right now, you want to kind of try and push out here and make it maybe take a risk play, but with this much time on the point, one player can get back and cap it so easily, I think they're going to be forced to hold last. The Uber comes out, though. 
forced, it looks like, in shutter by an engineer. This is not good for blue. Yeah, they're not going to have a huge disadvantage, though. Fragmented isn't healing anybody right now. Finally going to be able to reconnect back up with his team, build that advantage that much further. But yeah, Cherry Rendezvous getting the force off, and uh, that's going to help out his team. Both engineers making big plays onto the enemy medic. And, I mean, how do you generally like to push onto this final point? They've been ha finding success pushing from the shutter side, and they just might do that again. Yeah, process is a tough one, and I, th I really do like the shutter uber. It, it looks like it's been working them f for them so far. They're going to try it again. Uh, Blue it is kiting very well in the spawn, though. It looks like the fight's going to transfer onto the left side of the point here. Heavy and upper. Cap time on the point. Fragmented airing the heavy. Oh, this is so close. And Jackie Lux on the backside did pick up a frag onto the deck. Five players left alive on the offense. It's going to be the spy with the medic on the backside leading the charge. A soldier's not going to be able to do enough as they will come down to this point. Finally, the round, longest round of the game goes again in the favor of Chess Club, and they are looking incredibly poised to take it all. As with 15 minutes left on the clock, uh, this is not looking good for Dickmans as they have not had control of this game yet. Wow, really, it's just supreme confidence coming out of Chester. Tanking the Spy going in for that last cap, I like to see that as a Spy, man. <laughs> I love it, dude. It was like, but it, it's like, you know, they knew they had the advantage. Like, why not just go into your medic, try to make a play, let your t players do that, and they did just that. As we come on to this next mid-fight, Jackie Lake's getting rebuffed early on as he tried to make a fast bomb out. Good job by Dickmans as they are finally having a decent mid-fight. They're not losing too many players early on. Actually, I lied. I lied. They, they lost four. <laughs> Yeah, wow, that heavy on the roof is just such a strong play out of chess. Mil Milchman, is that how you pronounce that? Der Milchman, yeah. Der Milchman, yeah. He has been on that roof every mid, just climbing up there, taking height as a heavy, and who's going to jump that? Nobody. Yeah, well, definitely not today. That was a full team wipe. They killed every single player on the enemy team. They're going to come out onto the second point. I mean, I think that was like the mid-fight that you needed to, if you wanted to find any momentum to be able to take back this game, if you wanted to do anything, uh, that was the time to do it as a Disky doing a good job forcing back the enemy team. Overcharge is coming out here. Huge advantage as time three back cap going on onto the second point. Uh, it's actually distracting because Chess Club usually takes so long to get onto it. They are actually going to try to do their best, wow. but no, the back cap happens. The two players alive and <laughs> that, I, Chess Club still should take this, you would think. Wow, May just really saved the round for his team with that play. What a heads up play. He knew his team was not going to be able to defend last, so he just capped off second. But his team is being trapped in spawn right now. I don't really think they're going to be able to contest this. Demo out on the point, Pyro air blasting off, but just not enough players. They're going to get cleaned up. Milchman on the point, and there we go. Another the fourth round off there for Chess Club. Yeah, it looks like they're just one round away here to be taking this first map in their favor. Currently, the maps for this uh, lower bracket final is going to be process, and then uh, it's going to be one half or first to five or first five advantage, and then we'll be moving on to Borneo after this map. And if it needs to, it'll go to another five CP. But even if Dickmans are do find a way to win Borneo, I'd be scared going into Glade Wash here. It's Dima with another fast bomb. It hasn't worked out to for him this game. And again, he's going to take an early death as Jackie Legs responds in kind, doing a good job getting in. And he's going to be able to get out alive again. Jackie Legs just doing so much work for his team. Yeah, I think him delaying his bomb just a little bit has been working out a lot better than... Uh then Dima, who has kind of been going in at the beginning and the mid, doesn't really have that support. Wow, Clark, though, with a pick onto the sniper, that could be helpful. Yeah, and Fragmented and went down. coming from Choke. Yeah, I was going to say, Fragmented, the medic, went down early on uh, from Chess Club. Actually, it was Burn with a beautiful headshot onto him. And so this is actually going to be the first mid-fight for Dickmans, but is it going to be a little bit too late? 12 minutes left in the clock. They do currently have a huge advantage, but we'll see how their pushing happens as they finally will start capturing this midpoint. Yeah, and even if Dickmans doesn't win this round, and even if they don't win this half, just kind of taking a mid and taking some initiative is going to probably help them with morale. They do get forced, though. On, on mid, they're coming in. Big bomb at, out of the demo man, and he gets in, picks the heavy. Hmm. That's a rough force there. Yeah, uh, d nice job out of funds as well as a soldier. But the, at least the thing is, they used their recharge. They got the second point out of all of it. I mean, as much as it, it sucks to have to use your recharge in that situation, you might have had to use it just to take the second point anyways. And with how many players they sacrificed in order to get that force on the medic, I don't think it was as big of a deal 
um, as necessarily a, a force normally is. So they do take this. They're going to be at a disadvantage, so you are going to be seeing them playing in a little bit more of a passive style. And the reason this is, is kind of the same reasons you've been complimenting Fragmented, is that when the Uber Charge comes out from the defensive side, from Chess Club, they'll be able to kite their medic, they'll be able to keep him alive. Um, but looks like Chess Club is going to opt to just play it completely safe. They don't look like they really want to move at all. Actually, finally, they will move into this lobby area. I'm not sure if I agree with this. 11 minutes on the clock, you're up for. I'm not sure if you need to push out of a last, especially like process. Yeah, and it looks like Blue is going to have full Uber ad here. I'm not they sure if I agree with that play. They do cap second off of that. I mean, they did at least get three frags out of it and didn't lose a single one. And given that Dickman seems to be playing a little bit scared, We'll see if this uh, works on the favorites. Finally, the Uber does come out on the blue side, pushing forward. Spelly being, leading the charge with the headshot coming down on the Cheap Hawk as he's going to be taken out. Spelly going to be running away with his life. His medic completely ran away from him. Or, or the other way to put it would be Spelly ran way forward in front of his medic. And ultimately, that counter push uh, just comes to nothing. And now the advantage is going to go back in the favor of Chess Club. Yeah, really, if you're down four like Dickman's is right now, on a 5 CP, you need to be the team that takes the risks. And right now, I'm seeing Chess Club taking the risks. And I, I feel like that ultimately is why they're up for nothing right now. When it just, if you look at that push that happened, I mean, what was it? You have eight players alive or seven players alive, and they had a demo, a heavy, and a medic pushing with the Uber charge. Like, Where's your team? Where is the coordination? Adiski leading the charge here with an Uber coming out from Chess Club, picking up a couple of frags is going to be Fonz on the backside. Actually, make that three as Sunrise picks up one more, or at least helps taking down Spelly. It's no demo man here for Dickman's side, but it just again the aggression from Chess Club. You see their team move together, whereas Dickman seems to be like everybody individually trying to make plays, and that's really not working out for them. As Chess Club is not only playing a superior game, but they're playing a better team-oriented game. Yeah, I completely agree. I think I think if if Dickmans is going to stage a comeback here, I think Burn needs to step it up hugely because the combo from Chess Club is just seriously outplaying Dickmans combo. And if your sniper is popping off on blue, I think maybe you have a chance, but other than that, it does look pretty grim. And finally, we're seeing the team of Dickmans rolling in here. And let's see if they can be super as they're trying to lead the charge. Currently about eight players rolling into this midpoint. And you can see Chess Club rota rotating around the back end of the rock side. Uber charge coming out for both teams. It's going to be a little bit better onto the right side. Jackie Legs trying to get some damage down onto the enemy team. Pops up Dima into the air. But the Devil Man Spelly doing a decent amount of damage. Headshots raining out. And they are defending this fragmented. Escaping with his life through IT. Nobody's there to be able to chase him. It's actually going to be the Engineer as well as Dima on the back side. Try to get down some damage. But fragmented will be able to escape with his life. Finally onto that last point. And Dickmans, that was one of the first real pushes I've seen them do, and it worked out incredibly well for them finally getting a little bit of the team oriented nature together. Yeah, sniper on a five kill streak, soldier on a five kill streak as well. That's what I like to see. Flank and pit classes stepping up. As they come into last, Dickman's pushing onto the left side. They're looking to take high ground here. And the health, not too great for red team. This is just kind of a slow fight here. Let's see what happens here, Sigapu. When the problem is, is right now you only have two players currently into this final point. It was the Heavy who was trying to help them out, but they're going to use this Uber Charge just to get out alive. And for as good as the push that came into the mid fight, as well as taking the second point, ultimately the problems that Dickmans have had all game, which is pushing with just the combo classes, is what's going to be their downfall going into that final point. As Burn trying to get a pick does at least get one onto a disc so that's going to slow down this aggression, or at least maybe a little bit out of Chess Club as they won't have a demo man with it. You know, I, I don't, it didn't work out great for Dickmans, but I don't totally disagree with what they're trying to do there. I mean, they're down for that Uber, you know, they were going for a miracle play on last, and then they try to contest the Uber ad with their sniper and sewer. Unfortunately, Burn got counter sniped, and it didn't quite work out, but it was a play that I think they, they kind of needed to make if they wanted to try and win the game. And right now, Chess Club trying to roll it through. Only four players left alive here on Dickman's. Uh, Medic is going to be able to get out with his life onto the second point here. He's going to try to. As Disky taking down Burn again. Um, probably returning the favor after he got headshot when he's peeking onto that second point. Chess Club going to be able to retake this mid. And uh, looking pretty good right now. A little bit of a disadvantage as they weren't able to get a pick on the Medic. But uh, still strong play. But the the thing we're seeing is, is kind of like what you're saying. is like at this point, Dickman, to be able to take this map, it's... 
pretty much impossible. But they're at least, like, morale-wise, I think they're doing well. They at least, if they can get one round in this situation, I think that'll boost them enough to maybe play a little bit better as we're seeing Ubercharge come into this mid-fight. Yeah, I think the mentality for Dickmans here should just be put one round of the board and just don't tilt. That is That uh, should be priority one for them. They're going into a payload map. They don't have to worry about 5 CP until the tiebreaker if need be. And I, I think they just want to try and keep their morale up and just play a good game for the rest of this six minutes that they have. And we'll see if they can do that, but they just lost so many players in that last fight. And 100% recharge on Chess Club. I think they're going to be ending it off here. They just want to do it right now. 10 seconds actually on the combo classes are still down, and they're going to roll in here. Chess Club is. They're going to easily take this and make it 5-0. As the GG's come out, this first round, this first map, is going to go in the favor of Chess Club as we are in a best of three map situation. So this is going to be game point, match point, however you want to put it. Coming into PL Borneo, which will be playing a best of three. And, uh, I mean, kind of takeaways here, I mean, from, from Dickman's. I mean, we kind of have been talking about it a little bit, but looking back at this map, I mean, what are the big things that I think... What do you think, Viper, that Dickmans need to do as they come into this next payload map? Uh, for me, I think, and, and looking at logs as well, I don't know if we have logs up, but from what I'm seeing it from logs and just kind of what happened on the field, I think that Dickmans really just needs to control funds. It looks like funds is just kind of running all over them on the scout class. And uh, I, I think Borneo really could help them with that. Scout on Borneo is pretty rough. You kind of you might have to bonk behind to make plays, and it's payload, which isn't ideal for Scout. So I, I think they kind of have that a little bit of an advantage coming in. And um, the demo from Chess Club also just putting in a huge performance, but I think that that's boosted a lot by having a Scout in on the Ubers. That's really just kind of dominating the other flank. So if I'm if I'm Dickman's right now, I, I'm kind of looking to try and control the scout and limit him with the payload gameplay, or the game, payload game mode if I want to win on Borneo. Yeah, we'll see if they can do that. Yeah, I'm looking at the logs myself, and I mean, the other big storyline here is just, so right now, Hildreth, uh, he went out to the Rewind land in California, so he's not able to play here today as that just wrapped up yesterday, or today's Tuesday, isn't it? It wrapped up two days ago. Uh, but a Disky, the demo man, uh, coming in and just absolutely crushing it, doing a good job. I mean, honestly, a Disky was playing a little bit cocky, but you know, if you're not getting punished for it, play as cocky as you want. I mean, that's honestly good TF2 gameplay because the more you can create space for your team, the more damage you can get out there. I mean, he's picking up the frags as well as with the damage. And I mean, I think that's where the cockiness kind of seems to me is where he's trying to, he's taking those one-on-one -on -one fights. He's he's panning the medic of all things. You know, he's he's overextending, but um, again, like if you're not being punished, and I think kind of with that, Jackie Legs has been doing, I mean, the last time I saw him in the playoffs, I mean, Jackie Legs just, I mean, maybe he's called that because all you see is his legs. He's constantly in air doing fast bombs, getting way up there. Thank you. That was original on the spot. Just want to put that out there. No, but it was, he's been doing so, so well. Um, and I, I think, you know, he's kind of a, uh, just really impressed me and, and somebody I would not want to play against um, because he just seems like such a damn nuisance. And then when you have funds, uh, the scout, uh, to kind of help him out with that, kind of clean up the damage because if everybody's looking up in the air, that's going to make it that much easier for the scout to get in, do damage, and, and do what he needs to do as we are moving on here to Borneo. Um, what other storylines are you seeing here as you're looking through the stats, FIPA? Well, for me, I think, I think a bright spot is burn. He managed to go, I mean, he did die a lot, and if you look at what he died to, he, he got killed by the scout and the demo man a lot, which which happens when your team is kind of getting rolled by the other team's Uber. so I, I won't really look at his death column too much, but he had he top-fragged on the blue team, and the sniper v. sniper was fairly even, and uh, I think on payload, it'll be a lot harder for the demo and the scout and other classes like that to get to him. So maybe if he can put up a, a good performance against Tracker, then it could be better for Dickmans. I, I feel like the payload game mode is going to be a little bit more even than that previous game that we or that previous half that we just watched was. Yeah, I think it will be a little bit close. So I still um, definitely after watching that think Chess Club will have the advantage. But I mean, the big thing is is that you know it seemed like Super Dickmans were struggling kind of with 
pushing together. And I think, you know, the payload, having that like physical objective that you have to push makes it just that much easier for you to actually push together for that teamwork to just to be a little bit more natural uh, compared to five CP where it has to be like organic, you know, like you it's to be able to push together, I think is something that you actually have to have a good amount of coordination in teamwork to go with. Whereas payload's a little bit easier because you get some help with that. Um, I mean, kind of looking at the stats, I mean, nothing else is really jumping out at me, uh, but we can kind of switch our focus here uh, to Borneo. I mean, what do you think of the map, Borneo? Do you like it? As it looks like we're going to get started up here pretty quickly. Well, for me, I really enjoy Borneo. I think it's a, a really fun map. The only part about Borneo that I don't enjoy is the last point. Um, most of the Borneo matches that I've played have been against... Uh, engineers that are really good in NA, like Spamfest or Ender, and, and they are just a nightmare putting the gun up on the box on last, and it's just very hard to push into that last point. I think the last pushes are really what makes a the difference between a good and a great team on this map, just kind of knowing how to deal with that massively good sentry on box. Yeah, I think every point is fairly takeable, or, or not that hard to take. Maybe the third point can be a little bit difficult if you if you let the enemy team get set up. Um, and the final point, of course, as you said, is is one of the more difficult payload lasts to take. You know, even with all of the improvements that have been done to the map to make it easier, you know, they've tried to add that walkway, and you know, they add the little bar on, or what do you want to call it, like the the wall you know, uh, to kind of help it out. It still really hasn't done enough of a job that it is just like an automatic take. Like it definitely, as you said, is going to be a little bit of work. And it is going to be Super Dickman's starting out here on the offensive side. So they will be setting the time and Chess Club will be on the defense and we'll see what they can do as uh, the countdown is starting out. The Sentry Gun is very passive right now. Uh, and we'll see how Dickman's will be able to do and set a time here as the gates open up. Yeah, Kazul kind of in a position on the left side of the map, watching what's going on on blue team, feeding information to his team. Z-Man is behind, going for a pick right now on the demo man it looks like, and he's going to get it. That's a huge pick to start off the match here. Yeah, I'm not really sure what Adiski was doing there. He's playing hyper-aggressive on that far right-hand side, and I mean, I really just don't know. I mean, as much as like, okay, let's say he gets a pick even. Let's say he puts out a decent amount of damage. How much time is he actually delaying? Five? 10 seconds, maybe? I can't imagine it would really be able to do that much as Kazul gets picked off in the backside. Fortunately, you will be able to get forward again as uh, Dickmans weren't able to champion or to come off of that. Is actually the sentry gun, it, is it? Is that the cow mangler? Oh, it looks like it was disabled there as it actually does get focused down to Disky down to half HP and the cart continues to roll up. Yeah, I really like the way that Dickmans has pushed this first point. They didn't get over aggressive with that demo pick. All they did was just take that left side and they just tanked their sniper and they just slowly kind of pushed them out and they don't, didn't even use the uber there. That's a great first push on Borneo. And they're continuing to roll it up and yeah, just a good job so far. This is uh, kind of where 5 CP can work or did not work in the favor, but this is currently as uber train is, is going to be exchanged from both teams just a slight bit better on the blue side, but it's not going to be better as the medic is going to get caught in here. No, he gets taken out. The pyro finally goes down in here gets taken out from finally from the tracker on the backhand side. Mayhe is going to get onto that car, but with only three players alive on that offense, I maybe spoke too soon as it was just a few players pushing it together in that exchange. Then good job coming out from Sinrise to keep him inside. Yeah, where that push went wrong to me, it just looked like Blue's combo just got juggled in by the Pyro, and no one else, no hitscan class was really in a position to get that Pyro off of Spelly and Inir. Yeah, so let's see what they can do, as currently we have Chess Club sitting at about a 30% advantage. They're holding a little bit aggressively. And I mean, the second point, you can correct me if I'm, I'm wrong, but I, I find the second point to be actually kind of a hard one to push if you let the enemy team get set up, especially if they have the, if you, the advantage in the in the corn room or whatever you want to call it on that far left-hand side. Yeah, it it has been rough in the past. On, on teams that I've been on, we've had the biggest problem with the sniper in the window on the corn side, uh, near the corn sign, as opposed to where they are right now. It looks like the Uber is four set of red. That's a really... A, or maybe they wanted to Uber in. Very aggressive Uber, but Fragment is going to go down here. That's a little bit too aggressive. Yeah, Fragment did use the Uber charge uh, as just as they picked off Inir 
the medic on the enemy team, but it just seemed to be a little bit too aggressive. As, I mean, like, as great as it is to have that advantage to kill the enemy medic, you gotta meta remember not to commit yourself too far and losing your medic in that exchange. I don't know if it was worth it here. Spelly is trying to push forward, trying to use the heal advantage that he does have. He doesn't really have too much of his team with him right now. Finally, the spy as well as heavy is gonna be helping him out, but Sibhawk actually gets taken out there from a headshot, and the possible advantage they might have used in that situation is gonna finally be taken away. Is they're only going to step away with about a 20-25% advantage, which isn't that much, honestly. Yeah, it can be hard to work off an advantage on this point, just because you have to walk all the way into house or all the way up slope to make something happen. I think what Dickman's best bet is here is just to kind of take their combo onto tracks, which really isn't being protected by too much other than the soldier and the sentry gun a little bit, and force a combo fight off Uber, maybe get some picks and then repush with spawns. Because... Really, the only way to push the second point, it seems, is with the spawn ad. And here comes the Uber into house, getting stuffed by the Pyro Sunrise here. And it looks like they want to use the advantage because in uh, the Medic Fragmented was not up to 100% yet, but they weren't able to find him. Fragmented was standing all the way on the far backhand side, and so he's able to kite the Uber Charge, but ultimately the Uber Charge for Disky is really not used for much. Gazul is behind the enemy combo, trying to make a play onto the Medic, but no, he's going to get his life taken from Mayhe, doing a nice job with that Scattergun, and Siphawk pushing the far hand side, doing a good job, takes down the Soldier. It's going to be Sinrise trying to defend this cart with funds, as well as Dermilchman jumping on that side. With only four players alive, though, for the defense, they, there's no way they're going to be able to hold this, you would imagine. Yeah, and in that chaos, the spy for blue team, Z-Man, he made a huge play coming in with the revolver onto the fragmented, and that med pick should net them this point. But they are a little bit slow. They're kind of just playing this this alley or valley area here, and they're getting cleaned up here by the pyro and the soldier. It's kind of a shame to see them not work off of that medic pick. Yeah, it just seems like they were really slow. I mean, if I was them, I probably would just pushed completely up ramp side, get me to the cart as fast as possible. I mean, there was literally a four-man advantage in the favor of Dickmans. Now, how many players were actually completely forward? It would have been probably closer to even, but still, they didn't have heals. You did. You should have been able to take that. And it kind of felt like maybe, yeah, they kind of went to the valley side, went a little bit of a slower way, and then ultimately kind of got picked off as a nice job from Jackie Legs, who came around behind them and was kind of spamming them, doing a little bit of a pinch from each side and ultimately got taken away. And so that's going to be 100% Uber, but it gets actually used here by the Medic. I'm not sure what that was for. Yeah, it looks like he is definitely... Well, no, he gets out. I, I thought he was not going to survive, but looks like his funds bailed out his Medic there. Yeah, I would really like to see Dickmans just kind of push up tracks. House is just so rough to, to push into, and... If your your combo is fighting in there, then there's really no one to protect your cart pushers from the gun or from the sniper. So I think the tracks push is really something that that I'd like to see Dickman's try here. We'll see what is going to be happening right now. As it's going to be Sibhawk pushing in. Actually, it looks like they're going to do the same exact push as they've been doing. But at least they do. Well, they had an advantage that was larger than 25%, but now it's down to that. Fragmented wasn't healing anybody there for a few seconds, and they potentially could have even used that to their advantage, but they're just slowly kind of rolling their way onto this far right-hand side. Funds down to half HP, trying to contest them. As Sinrai is actually making a play from behind, gets the force off onto the medic, and that's going to prompt his demo man to be pushing forward. Trying to focus down the sentry gun gets taken out very early on. As Jackie likes, is going to be using the supercharge to be pushing in onto the enemy combo. In here is going to get taken out, as well as the heavy... As, and it's going to be just the demo man who's going to get taken out and finally, the scout Mayhe is going down as well as Clark. It looks like he wants to make a cheeky play, but no, he's not going to get it. Z-Man on the card, and just another failed push coming out of Dickman. And, and Vipo, what are you seeing going wrong here from these pushes? Well, I, for me, I think it's just they're not committing fully enough. Uh, on payload offense, it's kind of fine if you wipe the enemy team and just kill half of them. Because then you can respawn and you can push with all of your players against just the remaining remaining enemy players just because you have that spawn advantage. The bright side there is that Tracker went down at the end of that push to the Spy, so he is back up in Tunnel, but I would have liked to see maybe some movement off of that. And it does look like the blue team has kind of gotten into the house for free with the death of the Sniper, but the Heavy gets cleaned up by Funs on a 5 kill streak. Looks like the payload game mode is not stopping Funs from going off on Scout. 
It certainly isn't as he actually just won a 1v1 against the Pyro, and the Pyro had like twice or three times as much. He, like He was so incredibly low. His Uber charges are going to be used out from each team's spell. He actually going down incredibly low, fragmented at half HP. That is the Medic, but he will be able to get onto a safe side. As actually Dima behind the Medic does take oh him out. Oh my god, the of the what a spot. great direct. What did you see there? What, that was a great direct from Dima onto Fragmented, kills the Medic at the end of that exchange there. Yeah, Nanir is on fire currently, trying to find some of his teammates to help him out, as Gazul's trying to push forward, does know how low that Medic is, but again, despite like the advantages that they have, again, now they're gonna have, uh, they had a Medic advantage there, but everybody died in the process. They're gonna have about like, what, 25% advantage, which means they have to push off of it right away. With 10 seconds, was it a minute left in the clock here? Or no, there's 10 seconds left for them to be able to push this, and I really don't know what they're going to do. I mean, they just need to do something different, but they just keep trying the same thing over and over again. Yeah, this is where a team can kind of get into a rut. They're trying to get in here at the last second, demo bombing on the cart, but it looks like it might just not be enough. They do have overtime. Dima trying to get on the cart. It's laden with stickies. Spy and Heavy trying to make it up here, but the fully tanked Red Heavy on the cart looks like it's going to... End shortly here. Wow. And I think that probably sums up Dickman's season here. As they just might end shortly with a minute 10, which has to be beaten by Chess Club. Chess Club has two different ways they can win this match. The first way that they can win is if they beat the time on the first point. So if they take first point in less than a minute and 10 seconds, they will win the first round. The other way that they can win is just by taking the second point if they're not able to win in the first way. So they have two opportunities to win it. We'll see what can, they can do with the minute ticking down, coming on to this point. But just, I mean, there's a little bit of talking going on in chat. Uh, maybe some unhappy times. Can't imagine the mumble environment is really great in Dickman's. Um, but we'll see what they can do as they have switched sides. I mean, I'm just like... I'm kind of at odds here for like what to even say about Dickman's. They just they just couldn't do it. Like they just they never did anything different and they seem to also just be losing the 1v1 battles. I mean, I don't know how much really there is to say about it. But I mean, I think we starting on defense, I guess that's the the benefit is is after this round they will start on defense so they at least will have a chance to try to stifle Chess Club, but I don't know. I mean, what do you say to a team in this situation when they're when they're struggling so difficult or so much, Viper? Well, the way I would look at it is, they got a really good time on the first point. So, I think that 110 on the first point of Borneo is actually a decent time. So, I would look to defend that first, and then afterwards, you're kind of just trying to get to last and just turtle. I think this is really a winnable half just because of the map of Borneo. So right now the card is being pushed up by the spy. Mayhe gets taken out there early on. The demo, or sorry, the the defensive people on the red side, Dickman, Super Dickmans, are going to have to be careful because they are getting beat. They are being put on long spawn waves, about 20 seconds compared to the offense, which actually are kind of long for the first point. About 10 seconds himself, the engineer goes down. 30 seconds, and yeah, this is looking like it's going to have a chance for Dickman to be able to hold this. The card is starting to move up right now. The sentry gun did get taken out, and here comes the Uber Exchange. Yeah, it looks like the red uber came off a little bit later. They're going to have a little bit of a better uber, and they have the conch out here. This is looking good for red to defend this first point. I don't think that Chess can get this cart in in seven seconds. So it looks like now Chess is going to be aiming to push last to win this half. Yeah, so they're going to have to take the first point and the second point in order to win. If they don't do that, this round is going to go in the favor of Dickmans, and that first point first push coming out from Chess Club was very unconvincing. Uh, it seemed to kind of be a little bit all over the place, but honestly, it was just honest, a better defensive push coming out from Dickmans as they were able to use the conch off, which I love. It's something I don't think we saw on the, the other side, but actually Disky with a nice uh, pick up there taking down Spelly, and that's going to be a 17-second respawn for the demo man. Yeah, it looks like Chess is going to cap this first point off here, and now... Dickman's, oh, Clark goes down to Jackie Legs behind, and no Engineer to hold the second point. That's a little bit rough. If I'm Dickman's here, I, I might just back up and try to forward hold third, because with no gun, Blue will just be free to push up on the tracks here. And the Uber actually gets forced out out of a near in-house. I'm not sure what happened there, but the Blue counter Uber is coming in on a disky. He's jumping in and just making an absolute ton of room. 
and red is going to have to get out of this point if they want their medic to live. But they can't, they have to defend this. I mean, they have to do whatever they can to defend this point, and that's exactly what they're doing. Burton does pick up a frag onto Fragmented. The cart is maybe a little bit further back. They might have a chance. Spelly needs to run forward, as well as Dima on the backside. They need to defend this as a last chance. Spelly run on to the cart, the conch comes out. Scout's defending this as they come out. Yahoo finally goes down, and that's gonna be it as Chess Club doing everything they can to try to give themselves a chance. But it won't be enough, as Chess Club is gonna be taking this first round. Wow, pretty convincing out of Chess Club. I I really I th thought that um I thought that Dickmans were going to have a a better chance on this than on process, just because of the nature of payload, and and I think I, I'm not fully tapped into the ETF 2L scene at all, but as far as I understand it, uh, Dickmans is sort of a, an up and comer in in Prem and Chess Club a veteran team, so. This could just be partially the result of nerves. I know, you know, when you kind of make it up to the higher divisions and, and you're playing for your first time in, in an ex important match like lower bracket finals, the nerves really can't get to you. And, you know, Chess Club, as a team that's been here before many times, they're probably playing it a little bit cooler and a little bit more level-headed, and that might be why their Ubers are just so much more coordinated. Yeah, no, that plane does play a part into it. I mean, once you kind of play enough in, in playoffs and chess club, I mean, they've been there, they've done that. I mean, the last time they won was what, like two seasons ago, three seasons ago, I believe it was the last time they took first place. I think two seasons ago, they took second. Chess club has been a little bit uh, on a sleep. I don't think they've been as impressive this season as they have in the past, but right now it, it doesn't really matter what you do in the past. All that matters is what you do in the moment. And they're looking pretty damn good. And that, I mean, besides that kind of first push, which they kind of flubbed a little bit, uh, ultimately they kind of continued on. They were able to take those first two points very easily. But I think a big reason that happened, again, comes from the flank players of Chess Club, of Jackie Legs in particular. And, and you called it. I mean, they, he took down Clark before his team was, like, still back on the first point. I mean, that's that game sense that you need to understand. It's like, I can do a fast bomb into the engineer who's carrying his sentry gun, and I can fight him before he can even put it down. And that helps out your team so much. As a card, I'm sorry, the gates are going to be rolling, gates are going to be coming down, and Chess Club rolling out as they're going to be setting the time on offense. We'll see if Dickmans, they're in the last leg, they need to win this round in order to put it into a third. Yeah, and hopefully hopefully they, uh, they remember that we only need to cap the next point after the one that the other team couldn't cap rather than last. I did forget that, if you pointed that out in chat. I don't know how payload, payload works, guys. I'm sorry. You know, just a, a seasoned veteran. Like, how long have you been playing TF2? Like five, six years now? Somewhere around there? Uh, I don't know. Whatever like eight seasons is. So <laughs> you would think I would know by now. It's okay. We'll, we'll forgive you. You're a spy main. <laughs> we don't expect much out of you. Something, something. You shouldn't. You really shouldn't. Yeah, that's fair. And currently, I'm not expecting too much out of Chess Club as they're getting just picked off, pushing from this far hand side. It's not really working out for them too much. Finally, it did Risky rotating around Carp, but eating so much damage as well as the Scout. Both of them get taken out. Cherry Rendezvous as well. And Dickmans has not lost a single player so far. And they're looking great on this defensive side, but they've looked good on the first point uh, the first time around. So we'll see what they can do, but this is a pretty good start for them. Yeah, I think. Borneo first is, is one of the better first points to hold, in my opinion. And uh, the push that Dickmans did on the first point really surprised me. This is how I'm used to seeing them go. Uber comes out here. The enemy spy Z-Man actually gets flashed by the blue medic. Yeah, that was great. Always seeing that light up. Actually fragmented down incredibly low right there. Ate a pipe, but I don't think anybody noticed or was able to follow up on it. With four players down, though, on the defensive side, even though their Uber charge was better, they lost too many players to be able to defend this. And we're going to see a backup. Here comes Jackie Legs with the direct hit. He's running all the way to spawn, but he's not going to find anything but the hot lead from Mayhe. And he's going to be able to defend this. Clark was down there, so of course there's not going to be a sentry gun up in that situation. But we'll see what can happen as the disky gets popped up there from a little bit of a sticky trap, I believe. And we'll see what ends can come out from Dickmans as they were not able to hold the second point at all last time. Yeah, Jackie Legs gets in there and just picks the engineer again as Chess is trying to push second point. Really big plays out of him. He's using the direct hit, a, a weapon that, that I just have mixed feelings about on payload since it makes it so difficult for the engineer. But Burn on a 9k here might be saving his team. Yeah, I mean, if you look at the stats from the first round, he was actually top fragging with a disky. So 
pretty much the only shining light for his for uh, Dickman's team in the first round was Burn, and he continues to shine through. As you said, he's currently actually on to a 10k right now, as Dima should be picked up here. It's actually Spelly coming out. Fragmented is alone. Nobody saw him. He hid behind the tree. Is able to escape with his life. That's insane. Great job in game sense coming out of Fragmented and maybe a little bit lacking on Spelly's side, not seeing him. But this is going to prompt a push out here from the offense. Yeah, a little bit of a disjointed Uber though. Fragmented kind of falls behind that little box and the demo just gets launched up. Not much coming out of that Uber there. Although I suppose you could say that it was a free Uber since Fragmented made that beautiful escape there, so we can just give them that. <laughs> we'll try to we'll try to paint it in a good light, you know? Something, but we can paint that in a good light. As Anir gets taken out, Tracker getting the headshot, picking up one more onto Burn as well. So he's gonna get free reign for about another 15 seconds. We'll see what they can do, but this is going to prompt the push out of the offense. They should be able to easily take this point. Big plays out of Sibhawk here on Heavy, though, up top, dealing out just a massive amount of damage, but he takes one headshot, and he's forced to back out with those Fists of Steel. But I do like the play from Dickmans here. I think they are they're a little bit less under pressure than they were last round after their kind of poor offense, and now they, they are able to play defense the way they want to play it and they seem to be backing out of points a little bit more smooth and just making their medic live a little bit more than they were on the previous defense. And going back to that second point capture, a little bit of a questionable play coming out of Clark. I don't know if maybe he was just in a really bad spot. It seemed like he could escape with his life, but he kind of ran in on the card and suicided, and now he's just getting to the front lines and getting up his dispenser as well as teleporter. Sentry gun level one is picking up. I mean, the card does get... Take a little time to get pushed up, but I don't know if it was worth it for him to suicide. Yeah, I don't know. He's forced to back out now with very low health, and this could be the cue for Chess to try and push in here. They haven't really been shy off of working off of small advantages before, so... And Nier actually went down to half HP, able to grab a sandwich to keep himself alive, but a lot of spam coming down from a disc. He found the uber charge. This is come off from each team. No advantage really either when it comes to the percentage coming off, but actually it's going to be Dura Milchman gets caught in there, fragmented, gets disconnected with the disc. coming around the backside to get some heals to him. Down to half HP. The cart did continue to roll up, but now it's in the lower tunnel of the third point, and that can be a little bit hard to get free pushes on. Clark goes down on the backside from Kazul, so no sentry gun is going to be up here for a little while longer, and that might prompt Chess to get some more free peeking going on. Wow, Funz just runs in on right and just takes out the demo man, Spelly, and the heavy. He ran in previously on the Uber, took a 1v1 with the soldier, and won that behind. Funz is just making the plays here. And it kind of comes back to Clark going down from the backside, taking out Kazul. Because if you have a level one sentry gun, that's enough to stifle a scout from being able to push and do anything. But again, if he had a level three gun up in time, would that have helped him out to be able to defend this point? I mean, all this stuff is just kind of going. It's not just Clark's fault. But, you know, it's these little decisions that happen that ultimately hurt a team in five minutes and 51 seconds. So I would say that's a pretty respectable time. It's not a great time, but it's, I would say, a respectable one for... Uh, Dickmans for a defensive side of things. Yeah, I think for Borneo, you want to play it a little bit like you would play Badwater. You want to try and hold the first point as long as you can, and then if you get backed up to last quickly, you just want to play it calm and try to hold that that strong last hold for as long as you possibly can. And Dickmans here, if you're at last and you ha you're just crested six minutes and you want to hold this, oh, you definitely don't want to drop your demo man though. And the Uber gets forced oh. out of a near by the pyro four. yeah only four players alive though on the offense so it's not the worst thing in the world obviously you don't want to lose spelly but if you're gonna lose him lose it when everybody else dies on the enemy team yeah that's going okay. to have a full uber advantage here for fragmented coming in on the left side tracker gets dropped to a sticky trap though so they might be at pause the red sniper burn is uncontested right now and the Uber charge is coming out from the offense, doing a good job of trying to focus on the Sentry Gun, but still not able to be taken out. Finally, enough damage comes down onto it. Fragmented almost dies. That's why was right behind him, but the Dead Ringer got popped off onto Z-Man, who finally gets taken out, but a lot of spam coming down here onto the main side. But it looks like we're going to be seeing the, the combo trying to push up on this left-hand side, but actually the Scout Mayhew is behind him. 
Fragmented going down incredibly low, but able to keep his life. As we've seen, Sibhawk trying to push forward and trying to get down some damage. Sinrise is going to be running in onto the medic, but Anir down incredibly low is able to escape into the spawn room to be able to keep himself up at full health. And the defense is going to be holding on here for Dickmans after that push. Yeah, this is what I mean about this box sentry. It may, might not have looked like much since it went down fairly quickly, but remember that that's a full uber advantage push from Chess Club right there, and they had to use most of that uber to take that sentry down, and in the post fight there, they had no real advantage because the enemy team had high ground, and they just got pushed out of last. That sentry gun just creating a huge distraction. Well, I think this is one of the reasons that, and we see another uber being popped off here from Inir. I'm not sure if that was a force i was looking away but it doesn't really matter they did pick up five frags there but again they're going to be at a disadvantage just like last time and i if if you told me on the offense that i could lose five people but get the force off i would say let's do it because i know i'm going to be able to have a really good push about 20 to 30 seconds later and that's exactly what's going to be happening right now it's going to be a disc as well as funds leading the charge no sentry gun up to try to defend this the demo man and medic are going to be pushed back the card is starting to roll forward right now but they're actually getting cleaned up there they got a little bit disconnected from their team a lot of damage coming down onto the card but it's getting so close their ultimate is going to be the last one to be left in here as well as with the mini surgery finally does get taken out and the heavy should go down here, Spelly not losing his life, but that cart is in a great spot for a spy cap or just kind of maybe a some kind of play to kind of run onto there. But they just got to make sure they uh, do their best to let it roll backwards. Yeah, what I would really like to see from uh, Z-Man here is just to go to spawn and make sure that the teleporter is never alive. Uh, I remember when I played against K&D in playoffs, Carl, my team leader, told me, do nothing but sit on the telly at their spawn and shoot it to death. <laughs> because this <laughs> this walk is just so unbelievably long for blue team, and it kind of, if there's no teleporter, the spawns are almost equalized, if not maybe in favor of red team, just because of how long you have to walk if you're a sniper or an NG or a heavy or something like that. And right now the teleporter is just kind of going at full blast, so I'd really like to see the spy go take care of that. And it looks like we're seeing Clark has uh, switched off of uh, level... He's down to mini sentry, which I'm not sure is the best on this final point. A lot of frags coming out there early on. Great job using that conch as well as the Uber charge. Yahoo's jumping down onto the card to try to defend this. He had a chance onto the medic, but Ops just defend. And it's a good job as he picks up two frags. But here comes the soldier from the backside. Medic running onto it. And here gets one slap onto him. We'll see what he can do as well as Burn doing everything he can. Finally, the jumps. So many players, three players onto the card. Try to defend this card. Gets a mini sentry gun up. Cherry Rendezvous hiding behind the post. Is able to suicide onto it to keep it forward, but not any more progress. And wow, what a crazy defense coming out here from Dick Mintz to be able to defend this and get a few more seconds off the clock. Wow, that was exciting. And near on Medic there, instead of just saying, well, we just lost the half, he said, you know what? I'm a Medic, I got a saw, I'm gonna stop the cart, and that's what he did. And I mean, that's those moments where you have to make those decisions where it's like, I think a lot of players are like, oh, I can't defend because I'm not a defensive class, but anybody can defend. If your body can throw it on the card, and also props to Yahoo for opting to defend the card rather than chase the medic frag. I think that really worked out for him as he picked up the first two frags to defend that. And then good job on the soldier to be able to bomb in onto the card. Just really good job overall, but here we go. So many focus onto the card, and I think this should be it, yeah. Everybody ran away, and that's enough. That's going to drop in, but 11 minutes and 6 seconds is not a good time. Well, yeah, I, I don't think it's a great time, but I, I think if you're if you're Dickman's here, you don't want to get demoralized by that, because 11 minutes really can be a long time, especially if you're able to maybe roll through two points or something quickly. And uh, I, I think here they're just going to want to look to... to do their first point push exactly like they did it last time and then not get stuck up on second. I think they, they're going to come out with a really aggressive first push here and maybe try to wipe Chess Club on first so they don't have to deal with that that rough second hold that, that, stuffled, that stifled them last time. Well, I guess I meant to say that it was kind of a not a good time for the offense of, of Chess Club because, I mean, what would you put an average time... Uh, for the offense for pushing? Like, is, is 11 minutes... I mean, I guess I haven't been playing as much Borneo in, inside of competitive, so maybe it's slowed down a little bit, but I would say, like, maybe 9 to 10 minutes would be a little bit more average, and 11's a little bit of a slow side of things, but would you... Or would you say that 11's a little bit more average for the offense? Well, I think... I think 
a decent time that isn't good or isn't bad is around nine minutes. I think eleven is is a little bit long. I think eleven is definitely in favor of the pushing team. So we'll see what can happen as Dickmans are going to be coming the pushing team as Mayhew on the cart working it for Z-Man using that dead ringer to try to get behind the enemy team starting to set himself up. We saw Kazul, he's actually on the cloak and dagger and is just getting himself behind the enemy team actually sees in here at spawn. He's might try to make a play on him. He's staring directly at him. Actually, this is really interesting. He's decloaking right behind in here. Oh no! Oh my he god. The frag. Oh my god, turn on your speakers in here. Apparently he doesn't have earbuds because what what a play coming out there. A huge medic pick. And uh that's you gotta feel a little bit foolish after that one. Oh, that is brutal. It's not as bad as it would be for the defensive team, but it's still just very rough. <laughs> Oh my God! That's I haven't. That's just that's just bad. That's just ah. Uh, I just feel bad for him too because like you just think you're just oh I'm just gonna casually just arrow my team. But what a, what a play coming out of Kazul to be so cocky. But I mean you really don't have too much to lose other than maybe a little intel early on here. But that's gonna slow down the push. Cherry Rendezvous does get taken out. So no engineer. The Sentry Gun's gonna get taken out easily here, and so you might see at least a little bit more aggression coming out from Dickman's though. Tracker with a nice 2k taking out Burn and Demas. No sniper to counter him, and so he's going to have a little bit of free reign right now. And that's going to make Dickmans play a little bit more scared. One bright spot for Dickmans here is that Z-Man is spawn camping Cherry Rendezvous here. It looks like he's going to get the frag. Yeah, he cleans up the Engineer at spawn and the Teleporter, so no NG for Red Team. And finally, the push is starting to work its way up onto the cart side. A Disky dip going down to half HP, going to back up. They do have all their combo classes alive, and that is important. Cherry Rendezvous is still down, but he should be able to get the gun back up in time. Tracker just coming back to life, and as Dima went behind, and he was trying to get some damage down, actually get, did get a decent amount onto the combo classes, but not enough to secure any frags, and almost goes down himself. It's fun running onto the cart and uh, doing what he can. But so far, just some back and forth. The Disky did go down, excuse me. So that will help out with both flank classes also being taken out here uh, for the defensive side. Wow, Z-Man takes out Cherry Rendezvous and the Sentry Gun again and the Sniper Tracker. Z-Man is just going off on this offense here on Spy. This is what I like to say. And Blue <laughs> really needs to take advantage of that. Those two Sniper and Engineer picks are huge on this point. Jackie Legs also just got stabbed right outside of Spawn. And it was actually Kazul, I believe, who got the Force off onto Inir. Uh, behind the cart, so I think both spies were stepping up to play, doing what their teams need to do. A Disky's actually got Jurati on him right now, and that's going to prompt him to back up a little bit. There's actually two big frags coming out from Spelly. Make that one more as Dima chasing down Fragmented, trying to get a final one onto him. Finally just slaps him with the whip, uses, abuses that unlock, and great job here as they take down this cart. Eight minutes left in the clock, and I would say that's a pretty reasonable time through the first two points. Yeah, if I'm Dickman's here, I'm feeling really good because that second hold that completely lost me that first round, you know, they broke it in in really with no trouble, and I think their spirits are probably flying pretty high there after that. And they're trying to keep that momentum. Currently, they do have about a 50% advantage, and it should gonna dwindle though if they don't use it soon enough but they have to be careful i mean the biggest problem that dickmans have had all game is pushing too soon not with enough people but it looks like they want to work on this right hand side and there is only a mini century to defend this so it shouldn't be too hard for them to push across yeah i'm not sure how i feel about the mini century here I, I feel like the level three is just great at denying cart pushers and the mini century might not be up to that task well, there's a couple different reasons of why it could come out, but right now the defense is coming out from Chess Club as they were able to keep their medic alive and defend against that Uber. It actually came out from the conch of uh, Jackie Legs. And actually, they're trying to get a force off, and they do just that. Fragmented going down to about 100 HP probably could have kited that. I don't know if it was necessary that he needed to pop, but that will put a nice advantage back in the favor of the offense of Dickman's. And we'll see what Inir can do with this. But mini sentries, to kind of go back to your point, I mean, the reason you switch to minis is if you just are not confident that, that you can get a level 1 or level 3 up because it's better to have some gun up than no gun. Uh, and if you're kind of... And the other thing, too, is if your uh, gun goes down, you're really useless with a rescue ranger. So as much as I think that the level 3 siege gun is so strong, I don't think that moving to mini sentries is necessarily the wrong choice if he's struggling to keep his gun alive, which he was... 
uh, the spy was harassing them a, a ton uh, on that second point and one of the reasons they were able to push. Yeah, sometimes, Sigafu, you just need a little less gun. Thank you for that. And actually, right now, a little bit more gun as Spelly picking up a frag onto the medic. So many frags coming out right now. Only Jackie Legs left alive, and he's going to be escaping with his life. But wow, what a huge play coming out of Dickman. So many people pushing at the same time. And I think I heard, they might have heard what you're saying, got a little motivated. Engineer quotes get people riled up, apparently, in 5 minutes and 46 seconds to push this final point. Dickman is looking good right now. Yeah, this really, their play is really elevated in this half. They're definitely looking like a, a team that is playing on the same level as Chess Club right now. Conch comes out on the defensive side, though, getting very aggressive on right here. I really love these Conch drive pushes. And they're picking wow, but up some nice go down. Yeah, it's some good frags on that far hand side, uh, but none of the key classes really just the heavy going down. I guess the pyro engineer gets taken out as well. Still just on the mini sentries though, playing a little bit scared and 100 percent ready to go. And it's gonna be onto the demo, but no, Spelly gets disconnected a little bit too early on, gets taken out, and May he's gonna try to do his best to secure some damage. But Nier has to be careful to keep his life. Ubercharge coming out from the defensive side, a good force coming out from the scout and engineer to get that off onto him. And so at least it won't be too bad as a spy on the backhand side. Kazul trying to get something on it, and you're not able to find a headshot. And so a little bit of a clumsy play from both teams, I would say. Yeah, and Anir looks like he's going to get caught out here maybe by a disky. Wow, 13 health and cleaned <laughs> up by funds. That's so brutal. Like, you're like, oh, thank goodness, I just dodged this great demo. Oh, wait, no, I just got shot from a scatter gun from like 30 feet away. Great. Fantastic. GG Valve. But, at uh, least he wasn't panned by the demo man again. That's true. He will at least have. Yeah, I will. He almost got panned. He was so incredibly close. But I'm enjoying this aggression without a medic coming out of Dickman's. I mean, there's not a lot to lose here in the situation. And Z Man doing a good job. I mean, you're a spy main. What do you think? I mean, when it comes to the situation, do you think it's more important to kind of help out your team or just focus the card? Um, on this last, I feel like every single inch that the cart rolls back is just horrible for your team so for me i think priority on this last is to get the cart especially since the gun is just so difficult to sap because it's in the middle of a giant open spot really the only good decloak spot is like on the opposite side of the barrels on the cart side and you can kind of jump up and sap it but really you're just kind of dying for the cart over and over again which it's just kind of the life of of being one of the worst classes <laughs> I mean, that, but it's in some ways, I mean, that's like, it's, I agree, it's like such an important thing because right now the cart is rolling backwards and I do think that is a misplay. I think it, I'd rather have no spy in a cart forward than have a spy and have the cart rolling back because it, it creates so much pressure on the defensive team that they have to worry about it. And actually Z-Man is doing a good job. He does at least roll it back a little bit further, but now it's far enough away that the defensive team does not have to worry as much about it. If you get it close to that edge, like you constantly have to keep someone on it. Uh, and Z-Man again doing a good job poking it, so he is kind of changing his role to kind of keep close to it. Both uh, medics at 100%, and we are seeing a Conch being held by uh, Jackie Legs waiting for that push to come in, and so he's just not even having a gun out, just holding that Conch until something happens. Yeah, it can really help you in the Uber Exchange. It does get popped off here, it looks like, and no Uber Exchange happening. I would have maybe liked to see that held until the post-Uber, or maybe during the Uber. The Uber comes out of red here, are they going to get the force out on blue? Funds is getting singled onto the heavy, but it appears that Anir has gotten out with full add. Oh, he gets popped off. He gets forced. Oh, in a really bad position. It looks like they're not. Neither team is going to be able to do much on this Uber. Yeah, that was Kazul again finding his space in the back area. Kazul's been doing a really great job on this final point about just getting on the medic when he's backing up, uh, kind of focusing him down. Actually, Fragmented goes down here. It was Gerardic, Der Milchman, down incredibly low. Sentry Gun is up to level two. We have switched off of minis, but we'll see what they can do. No uh, medic has Uber Charge right now. And Jackie Lynch goes down as well. And that should help them out, actually. They're getting some decent picks here. And Tracker as well, the Sniper. This, this could really go well for blue team. With the sniper down, you can get very aggressive with your combo and maybe try to take this gun down off Uber. The sap comes out, spam on the gun, will it be enough? No, it's still alive and it takes out two people. Yeah, just a little bit of uh, miscoordination as the sap came out, but nobody was shooting. And also just on top of it, 
is uh, Cherry Rendezvous, who is sitting right behind it with the dispenser, and so he's able to take it down right away. So any chance they had at taking down that such gun. And as I say this, Inir did get taken out. There's actually a drop coming from Tracker. So that's got to be pretty brutal as uh, Inir had the advantage and now is going to lose it. But a quick fix up for the defensive medic. Chess Club switching off, and I don't know if the medic just died. I'd be switching to, to Medigun. Like, I would not stay on quick fix in this situation. Yeah, if you're blue, you're thinking, okay, red has quick fix, we have uber. We're going to get one more uber off before this ends. And we need to try and use our uber against this quick fix and, and win this map. They have one chance to get this off. If they do not push this point, they will be knocked out of playoffs. They will have gotten third place. So, And the uber quick fix gets popped off. Looks like it's forced or maybe a conch play out. Yes, they're singling the pyro in. Yeah, oh. and actually, look at Anir is on the backside being killed. Yes, Funz finally secures it. And wow, what a beautiful, aggressive play out of Chess Club. And I take back everything I said. That was a great job of them using that quick fix advantage that they had. And that's going to be it. With 10 seconds left on the clock, there's not a chance for them to roll this into the final card. And Dickman, they did at least uh, look to be trying pretty hard. But yeah, final people running on here. Two seconds. And there you go. There you go as Chess Club will be taking it 2-0 in this best of three against Super Dickmans. They will be going up to the grand finals against Strong Opinions, fighting it out. They will have to win two best of threes in order to become champions, but we'll see what can happen when the next matchup starts. And Chess Club, if they play as well as they did here today, they're looking damn good uh, to potentially take it all, but Strong Opinions, definitely no team to push over. As, uh, what did you see in those final moments, Viper, that kind of worked against her, or kind of in general that you saw in this final push that kind of stagnated uh, Dickman from being able to take it all. Well, I think I think really in the last like 50 seconds of the match, it was just a microcosm of the two maps that we'd seen already, and kind of just the whole series between these two teams, where Chess Club saw an opening, they made the aggressive play, they went for the throat, and uh, Dickman's just kind of maybe playing a little bit too scared or a little bit too nervous. Uh, maybe on a little bit bigger stage than they have before. And and Chess Club really just with the aggressive plays, pushing out on defense, pushing out of last, and just taking risks that, that they executed well. And pulling up the stats right now, uh, the scout funds, I mean, you talked about and you're like, well, maybe funds won't do as good when it comes to payload maps, but he just continued to do so much damage. Um, as he actually was top fragging for the whole game, actually the biggest thing here is that uh, Super Dickman's was actually able to get four of the top five spots when it comes to actual kills. So this is, again, the probably the best round we've seen them in all game. But even with that, when you have a scout and, and your Jackie legs as well, and Tracer, uh, or Tracker, I'm sorry, uh, doing a good job at um, being able to make those flank plays, it really helps you out. Uh, but funds, again, just going off. Uh, but Adiski, and the other thing too is Adiski did get out damaged by Spelly in this in this round as well. So nice job out of Spelly, as he was a little bit behind in the other games. Yeah, I think some really good performances coming out from Dickman's on that last half. I think it, the what they need to just take away from this is that they played against a a much more experienced team. They just kind of got their feet wet and. Uh, and yeah, I, I was in the situation a couple seasons ago where, you know, I just kind of got stomped by a more experienced team and I got knocked into third place. And, you know, I, I, I learned a lot from that. And I think they probably learned a lot from this match about, you know, how to play at, at a higher level. And, and no, maybe, it didn't. you know, <laughs> no, maybe in a couple of seasons, uh, I don't know. Yeah, so we are joined in here um, with some uh, fun people. We have Clark from Super Dickman's Funds from uh, Chess Club, as well as Sinrise from Chess Club. Uh, how are, are you guys doing out here tonight? I guess, well, I can, uh, well, we can take it out. Is uh, Sinrise, you just joined us, the Pyro Man. How are you doing? Uh, I'm doing amazing. Yeah, just won the game. So It's always, yeah, no, it's it's always a good thing. And well, Funds here, uh, you know, the scout just went absolutely ham. Uh, Funds, what, did, what happened today that allowed you to play so well? Um, I played some DM before the game. That's pretty good. That's all you really needed to do. I mean, it seems like yeah. you were doing a good job of finding moments and opportunities to kind of exploit your flankiness and your speed to kind of... Um, uh, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, I don't know. I was feeling confident with my uh, 1v1s on the flank, and I just kept going for things that I could see, and it was working out most of the time, I guess. Yeah, it's the same. I mean, if a scout's winning the 1v1s, it's ultimately going to come out in your favor, and if you can do it, why not? Um, Clark, uh, sorry about the loss today. You guys at least did put up a little bit more of a fight into that final round. Um where do you guys, where do you feel like um, you guys kind of went wrong into those final pushes that you, you seem to struggle? Um, I'm not sure. It felt like the entire Borneo game, uh, we couldn't convert our advantages into anything because whenever we had Uber, we used it and nothing happened after that. So I guess you could say we lost every post Uber fight there, there was. And that kind of screwed us up a bit because whenever we failed that push, we had to back out because their flank kept pressuring us with uh, with con. And yeah, I guess that was that what was uh, what went wrong for us. You guys seem to struggle a lot uh, when it came to the five CP. I mean, you guys obviously lost um, five nil. Um, is that just like, do you guys just kind of struggle in general with 5CP or was it just a, kind of an off day in particular, Clark, uh, when it came to that map? Uh, no, we struggled uh, with process in the past. We weren't really happy when they picked it. We knew we were going to lose it. We weren't really, we didn't really care much about it when we lost. We decided, okay, let's just focus on Borneo. But that first round where we couldn't push second, that broke us completely. Because we, we, we weren't expecting that at all, because we played chess on that map in scrims, and we beat them every time on Borneo. So we were kind of expecting, okay, this time it's going to happen. Maybe it's going to be hard, but it's going to happen. But when we couldn't push second, that was like, okay, that's that's about it. GG. <laughs> yeah, that was that's always a hard thing to come back from when you can't even take the second point, even if you have a good game plan you guys did i mean at least turn it up you, you did take the first three points pretty convincingly um it's just kind of that final one that it came out to but i'll take it back to to sinrise my man the flames uh the pyro what was your game like today what did you feel like you uh you did well or helped your team uh, um get the victory i don't know like on board um, on, on process everybody kept killing everybody so i only got assists and on borneo i played bad <laughs> that's my game also got a double air shot reflect that's something to note yeah, I don't think I caught that on my uh, camera, but I heard him seeing it. I think they caught it on the camera. John got it, I'm pretty sure. Nice. So completely he got intentional. It. Completely intentional. Well, that's every pyro reflect ever, Absolutely. right? It's just completely intentional, you know? Um, well, Viper, do you have any questions yourself? Yeah, just for uh, funds and Sinrise, did you guys like go into the game thinking, you know, we're going to play super aggressive and we're going to kind of play this get up in your face play style or did that just kind of like happen organically with you guys seeing like openings and stuff like that um i think we went in not really knowing what was going to happen and then as the game progressed we just realized we could keep playing more and more aggressive so yeah we didn't go in thinking that at all i don't think yeah we have yeah, some, I... some good dm players in our team i think we like with jackie now joining the roster like playing for us the last few games it's, it's, it's really aggressive and uh i think it works well with funds and then the disky working for us also a bit more aggressive, I guess, than Hildre. Yeah, but that's the thing. Like, it worked for you guys on on uh, process a lot. Like, it really helped you. But yeah. on Borneo, we got more kills than you did, and yeah. still, and still, we lost because we couldn't convert any yeah. any advantages at all. I personally, I I don't uh, blame anything. I just blame the uh, the approach of how we approach every push because we're really very methodical about it. While we should have just I don't know press W plus mouse one. That's it. That's all strap. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, I think, uh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go uh, ahead. I was just gonna say it was uh, it's just it's so rough to get off a good Uber exchange when their flank is like going behind and drawing people back into one v ones. You know, just a scout or, or and a soldier that that have the DM to do that is just so destructive. Yeah, that's always a challenge is dealing with good flanks. And if the if the flanks are having a, a good day, it always makes the job that much harder because you always have to have split focus. Um, but uh, congratulations again to Chess Club. Uh, you guys are going to be going to the grand finals. Uh, it'll be exciting to see you guys. Actually, it seems like uh, particularly your form over the playoffs has improved. And we'll see if you guys can take down uh, Strong and Pink.
when it comes to that commiserations to uh dickman's i mean overall clark I, I guess i'll give you one more question here before we uh go to shout outs um your team came in from high uh do you feel like you exceeded your expectations this year uh i think we met them not exceeded for sure but we met them we we were planning on getting the top three finish and we did so we are happy about it uh, next season hopefully we can uh, reach grand finals well, that'd be great to see you up there. Um, well, we'll start off with you, Clark. Then, any shouts you want to give here? Uh, Super Dickmans, uh, our hopefully future sponsor, Sprinkles, and uh, <laughs> that's it. Thank you. Also, I got I got an in with the Sprinkles guy, so I'll, I'll be able to. Get, I'll get that for you, Clark. Don't worry. Fine. How about yourself? <laughs> um, shout out to me for trying to screw me over in our melee duel and then still losing, <laughs> and uh, shout out to Chris for giving me an Australian Skagum. Nice, Sinrays. Uh, shout out to Chess, to everybody casting, John Sigafu, Viva, and also to uh, my friends who are going to Peck South. Shout out to them. Shout out to Hildreth not being there. Yes, you guys. I know Kyle. <laughs> I just you're gonna actually just like tell us Hildreth to go visit somewhere. No, this key, you can come back again. It's totally fine. Just no, it work out like and that. And he's the king. Hildreth is the king. <laughs> Hildreth is the king. Viper man, uh, any shouts you want to give? Pringles, oh, not yeah. Sprinkles. I'm sorry, I misheard you. I have been corrected by chat. <laughs> Either way, I was man. very confused here by Sprinkles. I'm like, what? Who the hell is Sprinkles? But we'll go with it, you know. <laughs> shout out to Pringles as well. <laughs> Sponsor us, you know. For me, shout out to uh, shout out to the boys on Snail Time, and uh, and Sigafu for for letting me cast this ETF 12 match. I've never done an uh, ETF 12 match before. It was it was awesome. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm glad I was able to get some of my. Uh, uh, what do you want to call it? I change people's names so I can actually pronounce them. I think I called in ear like Henri or something like that, like in the middle <laughs> of the game, because I'm just terrible at this. But I was glad to have you to my side, at least so I have another North American caster to uh, to have some fun with. Um, thanks again to John and Viper for being by my side, and thank you again to Super Dick Mins and Chess Club for getting us a good match, especially towards the end there, as it got pretty damn close, and an amazing defense that came out from Dick Mins on that uh, final card where everybody just threw their body to be able to extend out that time. Uh, it was a really fun match, um, so looking forward to seeing Chess Club into the Grand Finals. Thank you so much for everybody joining us out here tonight, and I hope you have a great night.